Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You, of course, can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Monday's edition of the DCEU Daily. So, Linda Carter has been confirmed for Wonder Woman 3. Let's get the details. Wonder Woman 3, Linda Carter set to return in DCEU sequel. Gal Gadot confirms Linda Carter will return for the DCEU's Wonder Woman 3 and explains just why she's so happy to have her on board. By Rachel Labanotti of Screen Rant. Linda Carter is officially set to return for the upcoming Wonder Woman 3, confirms Gal Gadot. Director Patty Jenkins brought unprecedented success to the DCEU. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, this is ridiculous. And these journalists know the truth, but never mind. When she helmed the first Wonder Woman in 2017, that movie was the franchise's first financial and critical success. Um, right, I'm going to correct you here, Rachel, and I've said this on this channel so many times, right? Patty Jenkins was the episode director of this film. It was Zack Snyder and Alan Heimberg who wrote the story. It was Alan who wrote the screenplay. It was a beautifully written film. And Zack Snyder did a lot of the choreography for this film. And his VFX team did the VFX. The, the style of Wonder Woman... What she did, the way she was, was all on Zack Snyder. And Patty Jenkins directed the film. I would have thought it would have been nice if you mentioned it. And if Patty Jenkins loves Wonder Woman 2017 so much, why does she drop the shield and the sword, move as far away from those wonderful, beautiful supporting characters that gave us so much you know, compelling emotion and levity and do so something so terrible? Um, so, yeah, I don't think so, Rachel, but anyway. And it quickly led to a sequel, Wonder Woman 1984, released last year under unusual circumstances amid the coronavirus pandemic. But even a diminished box office and mixed reviews didn't stop Warner Brothers from greenlighting Wonder Woman 3. Both Jenkins and Gather, as Diana Prince, will return for Wonder Woman 3. The movie currently remains without a release date and could end up being filmed after Jenkins' Star Wars movie Rogue Squadron. Little else has been revealed about Wonder Woman 3. Save that it will receive a traditional theatrical release unlike 1984, that it always seemed likely that the prequel will bring back some familiar faces. One has been confirmed after some heavy teases. Speaking to THR, which is The Hollywood Reporter, Gadda confirmed the original Wonder Woman actress Linda Carter will appear in Wonder Woman 3. Gadda said it means the world to have Carter on board for the film before elaborating on just why it's so special, having her be included. We'll read Gal's comments in a minute. But of course Linda Carter has to be in this film. Of course she does. I mean, basically... Wonder Woman 84 and this film probably will be an adaption of her fucking TV show. Wonder Woman 84 was an adaption of her TV show. It wasn't an adaption of the comic book character. They dropped everything that Zack brought to this character in BVS and in the first film. And it simply didn't work. And by, before we get into this a little bit, by the way, let's put this down for a minute. Because there was a lot of SJW commentary in Wonder Woman 84. Now, we all complained about Wonder Woman sleeping with the man who apparently had the essence of Chris Pine's Steve Trevor inside her. Some people even saying, this is a very controversial thing, that um, she was sleeping with a man without the man giving consent. But maybe Jenkins did this on purpose. Maybe this was more extreme left commentary saying, ah, yeah, she's sleeping with a man who's not giving consent. Now you know how it feels, men. Maybe she was being aggressive. Maybe she did it on purpose. Remember in, in the mouse scene, the opening mouse sequence, when the old men are looking at the women doing their exercises as they bend over? There was so much stuff here. Or oh, the moment when Steve Trevor vanishes and then... Wonder Woman is able to fly suddenly. In other words, she's free of the man. She's now an independent woman who can fly. And there's commentary after commentary. Oh, what about the Donald Trump character? Oh, sorry, Maxwell Lord. And it goes on and on and on. 
The first Wonder Woman's a great movie. Wonder Woman 84 is all Patty Jenkins and it has so many issues. Wonder Woman 3 scares the shit out of me. First of all, Linda has men mentioned me from the very first moment that I got cast as Wonder Woman. She was always there, talking to me, giving me tips. Tips! Tips! She literally just used to run around while her low-cut top would bounce everything about. That's why all the lads used to watch it. Oh, please. She was always there talking to me, giving me tips and everything. She's a true champion of what Patty and I have been doing. And it was so great that we managed to find the right opportunity to bring her to the last movie. And now to, to, to the third one. Interesting. For one minute I thought she was calling the third one the last movie, but that's not what she was doing. Carter played Wonder Woman from 1976 to 1979 on the ABC television series of the same name. She made a surprise cameo in the post credit it wasn't a surprise at all. A surprise cameo in the post credit scene for Wonder Woman 1984 as Asteria because she couldn't be a multiversal version of her own Wonder Woman, which would have been more fucking exciting, right? A legendary, a legendary Amazon who disappeared into the world of man after protecting the other women of Themyscira from invaders. Invaders that were men, of course. Dinah told Steve Trevor, Chris Pine, she had attempted to find Asteria upon leaving Themyscira, but was unable to find her. However, as Carter's winking appearance confirmed, Asteria is alive and well, and she and Dinah will likely cross paths in Wonder Woman 3. Carter recently sat down with Jenkins for a DC fandom panel, though both women were careful not to reveal any details about Wonder Woman 3. No, Linda Carter was promoting her fucking music. Yeah, embarrassing and cringy, right? Though there were many hints that Carter would star alongside Gadot in the third movie, this is the most outright confirmation of her role fans have received yet. It sounds like she will have a much larger part than she did in Wonder Woman 84. Shame. She could be poised to fill in a supporting role instead of a cameo. The hope among many is that Wonder Woman 3 will bring Diana to the present day after her two previous movies kept her to the 1900s. But it remains to be seen just when it will be set. Nevertheless, this is an exciting update for a highly anticipated sequel. Really? Not by me. And we can't wait to see what comes next with it. So there you go. Linda Carter is returning to Wonder Woman 3. Now, I don't know if you noticed in her cameo, she sounded very old, she sounded very weak, but she looked very youthful and very young. They've obviously filtered her, she's clearly had a lot of plastic surgery. Now, I'm not gonna be ageist, I mean, after all, I'm 49 years old, despite how young and beautiful I look, right? But, the point being, can this woman actually perform? Can she do anything? Can, can, would it work? I think a cameo was fine in Wonder Woman 1984, but I have my doubts. If she's going to be a principal character in this movie, how this is going to work? Are they going to rely on her? Is she going to have to do some, you know, fight scenes? How is she able to do that? She's in her late 60s, her 70s. You know, how is that going to work? So I am extremely worried about Wonder Woman 3, as you can see. This is a film... I'm excited about the other DCEU movies, but this one worries me. Linda Carter's inclusion worries me. Patty Jenkins still directing and probably co-writing this film, even worse, maybe writing it on her own, really concerns me. It wouldn't surprise me if Gal Gadot co-writes this film with her. This, doesn't, this wouldn't surprise me one little bit, and that frightens the living shit out of me. Or I'm praying every night before I go to bed. I'm literally fucking thinking to myself, please announce that you've, you know, you, you, you want to go in a different creative direction than Patty Jenkins and bin her. Nothing would make me happier. At this moment in time, they're working on the script. Linda Carter has been confirmed. I will assume that after they finish shooting, or after she finishes shooting Star Wars Rogue Squadron, she'll start shooting maybe in mid-2022 for this movie. It'll be a 2023 released movie. I would love to know what you think. Don't be afraid if you disagree with me about my thoughts and feelings about this film. But I think at the end of the day, Wonder Woman 84 is the evidence that Patty Jenkins is not the greatest director in the world. She 
doesn't have the ability to do great action because we really didn't see much, if any, action in the film and what we saw wasn't very good. She missed with Cheetah. She missed terribly in the creative conceit with Cheetah and Maxwell Lord. Instead of doing an awesome Maxwell Lord from the comics, she just made him as Donald Trump. It was ridiculous. He's a con man. Do you get it? Donald Trump is a con man. Now, I'm no friend of Donald Trump. No way. But I'm bored. I'm bored of Hollywood creating characters that are really Donald Trump. It's boring. You know, bore on about it on Twitter. Don't ruin our fucking awesome DC superheroes with this shit. So at this moment in time, I am not down for this Patty Jenkins directed Wonder Woman 3. I'm extremely worried about it. If she makes a great movie and I see it and I enjoy it, I would say I was wrong. Sorry, Patty. But at this moment in time, I am extremely concerned about Wonder Woman 3. I have a question for all you DC nerds out there. How would you feel about James Wan's Justice League? Because that's what my sources are telling me. Maybe I should have led with this story, but I'm not too sure about it because I'm not sure about the sources and if it's even true. But how would you feel about James Wan's Justice League? Um, look, I would love Zack Snyder to do his Justice League 2 and Justice League 3. So this is not a slight on um, Zack Snyder. I love Zack's DCEU. We were talking about him yesterday at great length. We will talk about him at great length in many, many videos because I'm a supporter of what he did. But getting away from Zack a little bit, I think that James Wan would make an amazing Justice League movie. We've seen his Aquaman. He made it look beautiful. He's going to make his his um, Aquaman sequel look beautiful. So I would absolutely be down for this. I would be disappointed if Zack doesn't get to finish his arc and story, which should have happened already. Ironic.com, ironicnewsflash.com, Zack would have finished his free Justice League movies by now. He would have done his Flashpoint and some other creative would have come in to take over the DCEU in terms of a director leading this franchise. It would have been done. His Justice League 2 would have probably made around the same as BVS and his Justice League 3. That's the kind of money they would have made, I think. I don't think you, we would have got into the billion, but, you know, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, not enough for Warner Brothers, but it is good money at the end of the day. Let's not be fucking stupid, but not the record-breaking money they wanted, but still good. Let's be honest about it, but... A Batman and a Superman movie definitely should be making more money. But anyhow, it's Zack Snyder, he's divisive, and that's fine. So, his Justice League 2 and Justice League 3 would have made money. It would have been done and dusted. He would have been gone by now. People would have been celebrating him. The studio could have celebrated him in the, on the outside, maybe on you know behind the scenes, behind all of our backs. They would have said, God, thank God that guy's gone. But... He would have finished his arc. There would have been no Justice League. There wouldn't have been none of this ill feeling from the Zack Snyder fans. But they didn't do that because they didn't hold their nerve. But anyway, on to James Wan making a Justice League movie. If there's anyone with the visual capabilities of Zack Snyder, it's James Wan. And I think he could make a beautiful movie. Like Zack, he's not really a writer. He can write as Zack can. But... His, you know, his greatest quality is his eyes, his directorial eyes. Absolutely. If you go back and watch Aquaman, you'll know exactly what I mean. So I, I would be absolutely down for that. Absolutely. I think that would be great. Whether this is happening or not, right now, he's in the middle of actually directing Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. I think this is going to be a great film. But Amber Heard is the elephant in the room, unfortunately. Now, I don't have great hatred for Amber. I would love to take her out on a date. I do love a baddie, as you know. But obviously, what she allegedly did to Johnny Depp is disgusting, and I don't approve of that. But I'm not as passionate about it as other people, and I'm happy for her to continue to play Mira. But things are happening. Depp is inciting more legal action, and she's in trouble, right? And if all this comes to light, before they finish shooting her in the movie, this is going to be problematic. Now, I don't know if they're going to kill her off in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. I have a suspicion they could do that. Um, 
I mean, I don't know. I don't know. They've stuck by her. It's very, very interesting. I don't think they've stuck by her because they wanted to stick by her. I think they stuck by her because they wanted her as Mira. They wanted that continu continuity. And I don't blame them. They, you know, Warner Brothers were in a very difficult position. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can say, yeah, but they got rid of Johnny Depp. Because in a court case, he was ruled to be a, a, an alleged wife beater, right? Allegedly, right? I don't know what the truth is. You don't know what the truth is. But when that comes out in court, whether it's true or not, the studio have to act. They, it's not their fault. They were, you know, it's not like the Snyder situation. Very, very different. But anyway, James Wan is going to make a great Aquaman sequel and I can't wait to see it. It's going to be freaking awesome. He's going to give more screen time to Black Manta as well, which I think is awesome. We're going to get to know some new characters as well. We, there's rumours that we're going to get Aqualad in this movie. I mean, a live action Aqualad. I mean, come on, who doesn't want that? So it's going to be great. So I have no doubt that James Wan could make a brilliant a brilliant uh, Justice League movie. Now, we, are, we will hear a lot more about their future plans for Justice League after Flashpoint because they're going to want to get there again as soon as possible. Now, we will find out in Flashpoint what's canon and what's not. After Flashpoint, after Barry does what he does, it changes everything. So we're going to know what kind of Justice League movie we're going to get. Who's going to be in the Justice League movie after Flashpoint? Who remains? Who are the new characters joining it? All these things are going to happen. Will the Snyderverse still be canon? All this will be a lot clearer after Flash. But yeah, I would think if they were looking for anyone to do a Justice League movie, it would be James Wan. Walter Hamada likes to work with his own people. A lot of people, including myself, pre the Suicide Squad, were talking James Gunn. And I mean, he has got the strengths to work with big groups of people. I think he could work with the, it would work with the character interactions. But I don't want a Justice League movie with radio music. I want a Justice League movie like Zack's with, you know, proper composed music with a composer doing it. And so even though I like James Gunn, if you gave me the choice between James Gunn and James Wan, the two Jameses, I mean, in fact, then both directing it would be beautiful. But if I had the choice, I would go with James Wan. I think James Wan has all the qualities to do a Justice League movie. And at this moment in time, Zack just isn't coming back. So, look, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. We know more people are coming to the table with Zack Snyder and really want him to come back. But I look, I don't know about that because this universe is being redeveloped. They're working on it. They're making decisions now. And they're not working on the premise of bringing Snyder back at this moment in time. So if one of their future plans is, you know, James Wan making a Justice League movie, I'm more than interested about that. Because, look, I think it would be great. I think he would do a great job. And do I believe my source? Um, I want to believe my source because I think James Wan doing a Justice League movie would be absolutely fantastic. He's got everything you need, and I, I, he's Walter Hamada's left, you know, right hand in the DCEU. They've worked together at New Line Cinema, and as I say, Walter likes to work with people that he that he knows, that he trusts, and it would be absolutely perfect. Out of all the New Line Cinema directors he's used, and I like David F. Sandberg, I just think a Justice League movie would be a little bit too big for David, and let him focus on that Shazam universe. He did an absolutely phenomenal, fantastic job in the first Shazam. But in terms of Justice League, because Aquaman was a bigger, uh, a bigger, a huger movie than Shazam. And James handled it brilliantly. And don't forget, James was under, under intense pressure because his movie came after Justice League. If Aquaman had failed at the box office and critically, which it didn't, it succeeded mostly with reviews. Some called it a mess. I don't see how you can call it a mess. But anyway... You know, most critics loved it. It was verified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Not important to me or you, but it's important to the studio. And it made over a billion dollars in, in the global box office. So, you know, you deem it as a huge success. So you would say that Juan, I mean, Juan is another one with a lot of fingers in a lot of pies. But yeah, I think he would make a great movie. It also depends how Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is received. If people don't like it, they would have to think again. But then again, 
A lot of people didn't like Wonder Woman 84 and now allowing Patty Jenkins to do another Wonder Woman movie, which, as I've already said, scares the living shit out of me. So, yeah, there are the rumours that James Wan is being tapped to do the next Justice League movie. Please let me know down in the comments down below what you think about that. Christopher Reeve's Superman is reunited with Jor-El in DC sequel comic. Now, this is a sequel comic continuing Superman 78. Basically, Superman the movie. Now, please stick around because I'm going to have a little debate with you all whether Brandon Ralph in live action could continue on from Christopher Reeve's work in Superman. Now, he's already done it in Superman Returns, but can he continue? doing that and maybe adapt some of these comic book stories for Brandon Ralph. The Christopher Reeve version of Superman never actually got the chance to meet his father played by the late Marlon Brando until now. Well, this is not entirely true because obviously he had discussions with the projection of jor -El. Jor-El spoke to him as a teenager as they built the fortress together and then in one of the um, kind of extended cuts of the movie after he first reveals himself as Superman you know Jor-El tells him things that he, sh he shouldn't be doing like why he has a secret identity but obviously in the flesh they've never met before now in Superboy, Superboy actually meets Jor-El which was played by who was played by George Lazenby very interesting this is by Joshua Isaac of Screen Rant. The 1978 Superman film directed by Richard Donner and starring Christopher Reeve remains a classic over 40 years since debuting on the big screen. Even today, the film is held in high regard by fans and critics alike. So much so that any departure from the tone of the film, as is the case with Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, is often met with trepidation among DC faithful. However, both his film and Superman 2, also directed by Donner, have more than a few missed opportunities. But a very large one has been corrected in Superman 78 3, written by Robert Venditti. Let's say that again, but written by Robert Venditti, with art by Wilfredo Torres and colours by Jordi Bella, in which Kalo is reunited with his father for the first time. Again, I've told you why this is not true, but let's see what they if it's in it's a meeting in the flesh. The Superman 78 series follows the events of the first film. Superman defeats a robotic scout and seeks out Lex Luthor to learn more information. Its last word, word were Brainiac, says Superman, but Luthor and Superman un are unable to prevent a massive spacecraft from arriving in the Earth's atmosphere. It hovers overhead, Metropolis as, Metropolis as Brainiac appears, and using his drone seeks out Superman according to the android. The Kryptonian is an invasive species who can cause irreparable harm to the Earth. Seeing the devastation Brainiac can unleash with his drones and without other option, Superman surrenders. Superman leaves the Earth with Brainiac over the protestations of Metropolis citizens, minus a, ce minus a, ce a celebrating Lex Luthor aboard his ship. Superman is astounded to see multiple species housed in entire cities have been carefully catalogued and organised into small biomes in glass domes. Before Superman can react, Brainiac activates a device that shrinks Superman and deposits him into the Krypton biome. The planet was not destroyed at all, but rather preserved on Brainiac's ship. But there's another surprise waiting for Kal-El. He meets his parents, Jor-El and Lara... L L L I say that again, Jor-El and Lara Lorvan. Is that her full name? Anyway, so this is interesting, right? Because what they're saying is, um, we saw the planet explode in Superman the movie, but they're saying it didn't explode, it wasn't destroyed. In fact, Brainiac captured it in one of his glass jars. So, but we saw it explode. How can this be a thing? Interesting. What follows is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation between father and son. Their first by Superman's recollection, Jor-El's words to his infant son as he placed him in the escape pod were obviously not remembered. The Christopher Reeve Superman never had any scenes with Marlon Brando's Jor-El. The information sessions in the Fortress of Solitude were with the image of Jor-El, not Jor-El himself. Although, Marlon Brando did play that, but he didn't play them alongside Reeve, I don't think. Seeing these two legendary actors on screen together would have truly been remarkable. Although we did see them on screen together, basically, anyway. 
A planned Superman 5 would have included Brainiac, but unfortunately was never put into production. But this Superman finally meeting his father on his home planet, no less, would have been just as welcomed by the fans. Unfortunately, both Marlon Brando and Christopher Reeve have sadly passed away years ago. Thus, this reunion could only take place within the pages of a comic. Or can it? Nevertheless, future issues of Superman 78 will no doubt explore the relationship between Kal-El and Jor-El. Hopefully, the two will find a way to restore Krypton to its former size. Now, this is interesting, right? Because Brian Singer's Superman Returns sequel, as we discussed a couple of um, DCEU dailies ago, was going to be about Brainiac. Gets off his ship, Superman shows him around, they're kind of chatting intellectually, and all of a sudden, it falls apart when Brainiac goes, I don't understand why you don't conquer this world, and why you protect it and them, and that's when they fall out. So that was an alleged script from Brian Singer and Dan Harris, and I forgot the other, other guy's name. They, they basically wrote Superman Returns. And it was disappointing we never saw that, but potentially they could adapt these comics, these graphic novels, and they could say to Brandon Ralph, hey, Brandon, you could do these pre-Superman Returns kind of stories, which would be very, very interesting. Or this can even be set after Superman Returns. That would be interesting. So this would be set pre-Crisis on Infinite Earth. So you wouldn't have to worry about that continuity either. So they could really do that. Now, obviously, Lex Luthor is in these stories, so you'd have to recast Kevin Spacey as Lex, because obviously he's a disgraced actor. And we can't have him playing Lex Luthor. So you just bring in someone. Michael Roy Rosenbaum would be perfect here. Now, he doesn't have to be the Lex from Smallville. No, you don't have, people don't have to be confused like some people think they would be consumed. Rosenbaum's a great Lex. He'd shave his head. It would be awesome. So I think this would be awesome, but I want to know what you think. Do you think Brandon Ralph should continue playing Christopher Reeve's Superman in, the, in these adaptions of these Superman 78 graphic novels, these stories? Because I think that would be great. Now, how they do this, how they say that Krypton wasn't destroyed, maybe as it's exploding in all these pieces, Brainiac does something, puts it together, but I, I just don't know how it works. Because in Superman the movie, right, we see the people going all over the place, they're exploding, people are dying. Or they, you know, they're being sucked into vacuums and stuff, so if there's a way Brainiac undoes that, or maybe he can maybe go back in time a little bit, there's obviously a way. I haven't read these comic stories, but it's great that they're doing them. So I think this would be great to actually have an actor play Jor-El, um, have um, Brandon Ralph come back as Clark as Superman and Superman and, you know, meet Brainiac and then be shrunk down and do all of this in all these different stories. I think they should adapt these comics. If you're going to bring Brandon Ralph back, adapt these comics. This could be really interesting because ultimately... He is Christopher Reeve's Superman. Now, I don't want to call it that because Brandon Ralph is his own Superman, but that's who he was playing in Superman Returns, and he did such a great job doing it. And, I mean, if I was a, if I was one of the powers that be at WB and DC, if I was Walter Hamada, I'd say, yeah, let's not go to the crisis thing. Let's not go there. Let's, folk, let's recast Lois Lane if we have to, um, if we don't want Kate Bosworth there, whatever everybody thinks is the best thing. Um... But let's do this. Let, let's let's adapt these Superman eighty uh, seven sorry Superman seventy eight graphic novels because I think it would be absolutely awesome. I wouldn't hesitate to do this. And I know what some of you Henry Cavill fans are going to say. Yeah, but what about Henry Cavill? Look, I want Henry to do his thing. But that doesn't stop on another universe, on another Earth, on the Christopher Reeve Earth. Brandon Ralph doing this, it would be absolutely awesome, and I would be so up for it because. This is the kind of thing you fucking well want a multiverse strategy for. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it? You can do different kind of self-contained projects like this. And I know a lot of people who would love this, to see Brandon Ralph Superman reunited with Jor-El. Now, it's not going to be the Marlon Brando version unless they can do something amazing with CGI. I just think bringing in a new actor, and if it's a really good actor, you know, it, it doesn't really matter that it's not Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando is no longer with us. Just like Christopher Reeve can't play Superman anymore. People age, people die, people have tragedies. That's life. But, you know, they brought Brandon Ralph in for Crisis. They brought him in for Superman Returns. We have got a live-action Christopher Reeve Superman being already been played 
by somebody else. I don't see any problem with, you know, this happening and them adapting this. I think this would be absolutely fantastic. And as always, I want to know what you think. This has been the DCEU Daily. Outside again. I met your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, comment, subscribe. Please subscribe. Not enough subscribers. I appreciate you all subscribing and supporting me. But I need more. Why? Because I'm greedy and I want world domination. Smash the notification bell at the very top there so you don't miss this perfection. And of course, it goes without saying, I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. Until then, goodbye.